Hello and welcome to First Lady with Meghna Pant, an exclusive show on First Post where we bring you stories from India's foremost leaders, activists and thinkers. Today we are going to be joined by one of India's most talented actors, Kalki, who is also a compelling reminder that women need neither to be censured, nor controlled, nor pitied, but to be celebrated in all their emotional, intuitive and empathetic glory. Kalki will be speaking to us about the life of an actor and what it means to be an actress in an actor's world. So Kalki, thanks so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Meghna. Uh, so, you know, I, I wanted to start with, you know, the life of an actor. Now, you've essayed, I think, some of the most difficult roles in the history of the Indian film industry. Uh, you know, from your, your debut role uh, as a prostitute to the cerebral palsy girl. My question to you was, how do you sink your teeth into these characters? Because you, you nail it each and every time. And I'm sure there's a huge process, there's a lot of hard work behind it. So what really goes on in your mind? I don't know if I nail it every time. I, I see a lot of my own flaws when, I'm, when I see my performances. But mm. I think that I've been lucky that I've had firstly very, uh, very sincere directors around me who yeah. push me. Uh, you know, Shonali made me work for six months for Margarita with a straw okay. uh, to train and, and get into the part. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, each director has their different processes, but w I've had to do workshops for most of my films. So, okay. uh, and then I think it's just the personal excitement. Like, I still feel like a kid when yeah. I get a script and I'm really excited by a role and I'm like, throwing myself into the research and you know I want to know more immediately I google the subject or find out more about it and yeah. so for me that enthusiasm is is still thankfully there okay. uh, when I get a good role. Okay. You know. Is there something that you'd call the most difficult character that you had to portray and how did you then go about preparing for that? The scariest was Margarito the straw just because yeah. of the sheer um, responsibility you have to portray somebody with cerebral palsy uh, yeah. you know it's it's you're representing uh, mm. a certain person that you are not yeah. and it's really important to get that right yeah. uh, so I was very very worried and very stressed about that yeah. and I told Shonali and we kind of made a pact we said you know yeah. if, if in six months we're gonna do like we kept doing um, like uh, you know a test every yeah. few months to see the progress in terms of how I was performing yeah and we said in six months if we haven't managed to nail it we will drop the film Oh, okay. uh, we won't do it because yeah. it has to be authentic or not done at all. So that was a kind of trust that we had with each other. I think when we imagine you sort of preparing for a role or any actor preparing for, especially you know the kind of intense roles that you've undertaken, I keep imagining you know this sort of intense exercise regime or actors starving themselves <laughs> or I don't know going to the hair salon every day. What is actually you know for the common person? Right. This is a perception we have, mm. but what is? it actually like? What is the, say, describe a day in the life of an actor? For me, it's like how not to get bored with the, the same repetition. Yeah. Because uh, acting is a sort of repetition. It's mm. like getting, whether it's learning your lines yeah. or learning a certain behavioral pattern of the character. Yeah. You know, if it's an older person or somebody with a limp or whatever yeah. the behavioral patterns of a certain person are. Yeah. Mm, and that can't happen just by thinking and noting down TK, this person will have a weak left arm, this yeah. person will have a twitch in the eye. It's yeah. all right to think those things, but until you do them every day and it becomes part of your system, yeah. uh, it, it won't look natural on screen. Yeah. So for me, it's really about doing that daily riyaz. Uh, so for Margarita, I would spend two hours every day doing whatever ordinary activities I had in the day yeah. but as Lila so brushing my teeth okay. or making breakfast or being on the computer or on the phone answering much to the frustration of whoever picked up on the other side because they couldn't understand because yeah. I I had to do all those things every day yeah. in order for it to become muscle memory okay. so that I wasn't thinking anymore okay, achha, yeah. as Lila I have to pick up the phone like this yeah it became so natural that sometimes I'd go for a drink afterwards yeah like and I would catch Actually. my beer <laughs> like that you know because <laughs> I was so used to it it became yeah. muscle memory yeah and I feel as actors we don't do that as yeah. much like if you look at a musician yeah. their riyaz is so important and Absolutely. if you know a violinist uh, when he's learning a song will read from the paper the um, mm. The, the notes but after a while he doesn't need to look at that paper he, exactly. it's, and he doesn't even need to know what the note that's coming his 
body knows the note exactly. his arm knows where to go next yeah. he's not looking here and playing right he just yeah. he can be somewhere else and play and that's when you can emote that's yeah. when emotion comes out in a in a musician and it's yeah. the same for an actor yeah once your body you're not thinking about those things Yeah. what your next line should be what your body should be doing next yeah. then you have the freedom to really emote that's so interesting yeah. you know because when i'm also writing i don't tend to navel gaze i like i like to inhabit worlds that are outside my comfort zone hmm. so that i go on a journey and then hopefully my reader does as well right so as an actor is it something similar like do you feel like uh, with the you know the different people that you're uh, sort of imbibing do you f- try to find similarity with your own life or do you does a character become you do you become the character it's it's a mixture i think definitely um somewhere you need to resonate and make that character human by yeah by understanding yeah or absolutely. empathizing to the situation yeah but at the same time you can't always be the character you can't immerse mm-hmm. yourself so much if you're playing a drug addict doesn't mean yeah. you become a drug addict right of course yeah so uh, i think the important thing is to is to understand where that character is coming from and it makes you a lot more empathetic exactly right because you're going on a, as you said a journey yeah. into someone else's life yeah and suddenly you're considering all the other points you know yeah. you're considering okay where did they come from what affected them why did they become like this exactly. and all of these you become things. a much more sensitive person right. because and you're, you're less judging you become a lot less judging because of course. you're like you know until you've walked in those shoes, shoes you can't really say anything so i wanted to also talk to you about how, what it is like uh, to inhabit uh, a world that is sort of patriarchal an industry that is you know a slightly misogynistic i'd imagine or at least dominated primarily by men mm. so Uh, how different are uh, according to you female and male actors in say bollywood um different means we are different biologically like. we're different <laughs> but yeah. i think what's um, what's different is that there's a setup a patriarchal setup a system which um is now being questioned very recently exactly uh, which hadn't been questioned for a very long time uh so it's still i think going to take a long time for things to change but yeah. what I, what is happening is that uh for a long time we've had stories which have been patriarchal hmm. the stories themselves yeah so uh, the story tells the story of a hero and the sidekick or the heroine who's who's a scorekeeper who could or not or, be yeah. you know who could also not be in the film it's yeah. not plot driven that she's there it's is the she's supporting the role of the hero yeah and um and i think that has started changing when you see a film like Piku or Queen where the heroine is leading the film and yeah. is not it's not led by a hero uh and i think that comes from the writing the telling of the story you we yeah. need stories which which tell the other side which yeah. tell stories of women or where women are not just sidekicks in the film but actually have a reason for being in the story yeah. so um i think that's definitely something that is slowly sort of changing or yeah. at least there's some introduction um and uh you know i think that as humans we are greedy and opportunistic mm-hmm. and as long as men are, have the opportunities they will they take will all of it, them yeah. it's for us to fight for those and exactly. uh, i really think that it's uh, you know it is pe- women who stand up for themselves that are yeah. going to change things you know uh, um the other day some someone asked me this lady she asked me how can we help the cause of women how can i help you i love mm. the work that you're doing yeah. and i said don't try to help me just help your own situation because that itself mm. will change things you know you change your own life and you will people will change yeah. theirs around you you know Definitely. and that includes men men will accommodate around a woman who who starts to empower herself mm. so for you like when you look at uh, you know your journey so far uh, as an actor and somebody who was an outsider who entered the industry uh, is the public life something that you strived for i was it what you expected are you enjoying it i never i don't think you strive for a public life like yeah. you're not were you like i want to be famous when i was like, five years old or whatever um No, mm. not famous. I always wanted to act. I oh, I remember okay. being very enthralled by watching yeah. like movies and you know I was like I really want to yeah. I want to make people laugh and cry, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh the power of that. Yeah. But um 
I don't think I ever thought of it from the point of view of I want people on the roads to recognize me. I, yeah. I definitely find that uh, the limitation of celebrityhood is that you can't live the same life. Or yeah. I, but I do try immensely to stay sort of uh, in touch with reality. I, you know, I go and buy my own sabji in the market, mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, I do my own chores and things like that, so that I don't cut off from reality you know I think that is important for yes, me and you've never there's no, never been a bad incident say suppose when you're out you know walking on the road even though people recognize you there have been incidents um, I would say more in Delhi where <laughs> people are just far more obsessed with stardom okay um, where it's just been too many people gathering and I've had to rush out of you know a Khan market or somewhere where you don't expect a, a, that yeah. kind of situation and, and you have to get out uh, but in Bombay never in really? Bombay my sabji wala is so disillusioned <laughs> she's coming in her like kurta pajama <laughs> no makeup <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah I think people here are kind of used to stardom a little more yeah, I think so mm. well, my last question and we have a special round after this which I uh, I think you might enjoy also so you know you are of course one of the I think most evolved people I've ever met you're very intellectual <laughs> also no seriously I, I've, I've always admired you so much for that uh, but it, it for me it's very interesting that you're in you know in, in the industry of uh, the Bollywood industry so do you sometimes like most you know intellects sometimes look down upon your own films do you sort of flinch while watching certain movies in Bollywood? No, I don't actually, you know, I'm not this big intellectual that people think I am. I really am not. I love going to watch a rom-com. Like, you know, I love to go and watch uh, quite a mindless film. And I, at the same time, I, I completely appreciate art films and completely love documentaries. I think my favorite genre is actually documentaries. Okay. Because reality, nothing replaces reality for me. That that you know, that's real stories being told uh, and captured and not manipulate. Uh, well, actually documentaries can be very manipulative, but yeah. good documentaries, I think, are beautiful observations of life. Yeah. Anyway, like I good feel... Like of life. Yeah. yeah. So I don't feel that way at all. I, uh, I enjoy a good blockbuster, I really do. Uh, and I've, I've... In my films, I can be very critical, but I also think that I've learned so much from each one of them and I've actually been lucky that I've worked with for me some of the best directors in the country from yes. Dibakar to Anurag to Zoya and all very different genres not at all in, in this you know some are commercial some are independent yeah. uh, but I think there's value in all of them yeah, yeah. definitely one last question which I hadn't prepared but I just wanted to throw it out there uh, you know going into the future um, where would you like to see women in the industry? Like, at what level? Like, is feminism really working there? Uh, would you, uh, you know, as an individual person, do you think you can affect change at all? I absolutely think you can affect change as an individual person. Uh, just by being who you are, uh, in the sense, practicing what you preach, rather than, uh, you know, I, all of us can't go out and work with NGOs, as some of us do, but, you know, the point is that if you are in an office environment and you do see a certain inequality and injustice, you bring it up. Speaking about these things can just make your own life uprooted and nobody gets, you don't get credit for that. Mm. N the world can't see that. So, you know, it's not like you're being hailed for your feminism, but that's real feminism. That's Actually. really the important feminism. Standing up for your own life. Even if you don't stand up for any other person, if you stand up for yourself as a woman, I think that's feminist. Well and said. if men do it, wow. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be a great oh, day. That would right? be great. Well, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, so this is my my most favorite part of the show where it's a pop quiz. Okay. So you have to answer Eyes in like one word. Lighting up. Uh -oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a fun, like, you know, fun, easy thing. Huh. So I'll just throw like ten questions at you and you answer them. Uh, mm. yes or no, whatever, one word. Uh, so, what do you want to most be remembered for? Good person or good actor? <laughs> oh God! Good actor. Women or men? Who works harder in Bollywood? Women. I'll tell you, I saw this Facebook uh, video, okay, and uh, uh, it was like a girl dancing and she's doing ta 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 and then the guy comes and goes ta. 
so like women have to get do so much more to reach the same place as the guy so that was a very funny joke women or men who has it easier in bollywood men like all over the world right yeah for the moment <laughs> yeah mostly i yeah. would say okay beauty talent or clout uh rank each in order of importance clout i think although that's changing now okay in fact i would say clout is going down and it's more beauty and talent okay. i think if you have talent and beauty you're pretty sorted in this industry that's great good to hear that yeah, yeah. theater or movies where do you find better actors mm that's arguable one word when you think of love practical or passion hmm fraction <laughs> uh practicality goes under yeah i think the right? true sign of of love is when you don't mind your heart getting broken remarriage yes or no i don't want to get remarried no i think i do want to fall in love i do want to find a partner i think it's it's important to have someone in your life a support of some kind mm-hmm. um but i don't think i want to marry the person and their family <laughs> more the family right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but we are very lucky in that that you know we can always there's so many options now you can yeah, do that's true know, you don't have to be married to a kid freeze your eggs do artificial insemination yeah which i've been like, powering that's through for yeah. there's so many op- you don't need a man yeah, to kid yeah i mean coco is an in, in inspiration when i see konkana sen sharma yeah. cuz i've just worked with her on a film and, yeah. you know harun her son is i think 5 or 6 now and uh, of course ranveer is a very supportive partner but they're yeah. not together so you yeah. know uh, it's amazing that they manage it inspires me i think it can it can happen being a single mother can work mm. i think yeah but it's a lot of work but it yeah. can work yeah. yeah great so thank you so much for joining us thank uh, you. you know in a world of imitation where people rarely play themselves it's refreshing to find someone so authentic and original thank so thanks kalki for joining thank us you. again thank you so much so-